This past weekend, news broke that Bishop Joseph Strickland of the Diocese of Tyler, Texas, had been removed as the leader of his diocese by Pope Francis. The Vatican issued a blunt statement on Saturday, November 11th, without giving a specific reason for the move. Needless to say, a worldwide firestorm of controversy has erupted. Here to respond to the Vatican's decision and action here, I'm joined by His Excellency Bishop Joseph Strickland. He joins us from Baltimore. Bishop Strickland, thank you for being here. Despite the recent apostolic visitation of your former diocese ordered by Pope Francis and completed in June, this news of your removal has come as a shock to Catholics. This was the terse statement from the Holy See. We'll put it on the screen. The Holy Father has removed Bishop Joseph E. Strickland from the pastoral care of the Diocese of Tyler, United States of America, and has appointed Bishop Joe Vasquez of Austin, his apostolic administrator. Um, Bishop, th that was the bulletin from the Holy See Press Office. Uh, my question is this. No reason was given in the bulletin, and no official reason for your dismissal has been offered since. Did you have any idea that this was coming before you read the bulletin, and were you personally notified about this, and how? Yes, uh, Raymond, I had a uh, in-person visit in the nuncio's office, uh, the nunciature, last Thursday. Um, and we had a brief meeting where uh, his eminence informed me of uh, really the, the Holy Father's decision. At first, they said, we're, uh, we're requesting that you resign. And I'd made it pretty very public that I, I felt I couldn't resign. So they simply said, well, then you will be uh, removed. Uh, the letter that I was sent actually said, I was relieved of the responsibilities as Bishop of Tyler, um, an interesting mm. word. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. and I actually didn't see the, the statement in the bulletin, you know, that comes out at noon on Saturday. Mm -hmm. um, but that, I was informed uh, in the meeting in person on Thursday, very cordial. Um, His Eminence was, uh, I, it seemed almost uh, kind of embarrassed to, to share this, but I, I said, I understand. I know it's part of your work uh, to mm -hmm. deliver this kind of message. And uh, so I was informed on Thursday morning, flew back to Dallas and then Tyler, uh, drove to Tyler, and got, I was back in the office, had masses as usual. Of course, I didn't tell anyone anything. And then I received the, um, by email, an attachment of the letter that said I was relieved of my duties uh, was of, that, as Bishop was, of was Tyler. Was that the papal decree? Was that the, the papal decree that they sent you? Well, yes, yes, yeah. And it, it mm -hmm. gave, it was, Pretty much what you said on the bulletin said, I'm removed. Bishop Vovask, Joe Vasquez of the Diocese of Austin has been appointed as administrator as they await the naming of the fifth Bishop of Tyler. Did <clears throat> Cardinal Pierre offer any reason for the request for you to retire? Um, or yes, resign he your read. Office, rather? read several pages of issues that of concerns and really uh, he made it clear that the decisions made he was just sort of giving me information about what the decision was based on um, and it was that let me say because there's a lot out there because of some yes. comments even from a priest in the diocese oh administrative mm -hmm. concerns he didn't mention a single administrative concern that that I heard. Um, he did mention um, a lack of fraternity with my brother bishops, which I, mm. I, I think is basically comes down to a lack of, I'm speaking up and they're not. So that has been, yeah, that's been a bit uncomfortable, but they've been very cordial and I've been at various mm -hmm. meetings and at various events. Um, so, that was one thing, uh, the, the fact that I didn't implement uh, traditionis custodis. Um, I basically didn't not implement, I just didn't respond. Uh, we have a few Latin masses. And as I mm -hmm. uh, said, 
I, I felt like I couldn't deprive that portion of the flock of the nourishment they were receiving. Great young families, mm -hmm. packed to the gills, these churches where, I mean, we have one FSSP church, so that's accurate. I didn't um, implement that. I think other bishops have not responded to that as maybe the right. Vatican wishes. So that was one of the issues. Um, certainly my internet media, the social media presence, that is, I'd already been told to, to cool it on that. Um, but mm. I, I feel it's important. I'm, you know, I'm a successor of the apostles and that's a huge responsibility. And I feel the responsibility of speaking the truth as I understand it. I've tried to do so respectfully. I'm not about attacking anyone. I love the church. I love Christ, his church, the Pope Francis, all the, the I mean, we're all uh, bishops. We're all successors of the apostles. We should be working together. So if, if I'm reading this correctly, it was basically breaking fraternity with your fellow bishops. Bishop, this sounds like Bishop Torres, Daniel Torres down in, in Puerto Rico, who was the sole bishop who objected to vaccines being used. And if memory serves, you also uh, were giving your people an option and said you don't have to take the vaccine. It may not be morally licit. Is that correct? Absolutely. I and, and with the whole COVID situation, um, and that's one of the things that um, wasn't mentioned, but that's where I, I've been on a different page. But I said, we can't mandate people to violate their conscience, to, to go against their free will. Uh, and that's, you know, that was all in the air during the whole COVID situation. Mm. Um, so... You know, there have been many issues that I've been very clear about that I haven't heard the, the clarity on from other bishops. And, you know, it, it, maybe it's the East Texan in me. Maybe it's just, I don't know. But for one thing, Raymond, um, mm -hmm. I, I spend a lot of time in prayer. Uh, that's because I need to. I need to grow closer yeah. to the Lord. And I feel that closeness. And when ancient truths that Christ proclaimed that are recorded in Scripture that the church has taught for years seem to be up for debate, I've been, I mean, that's one of the things that was listed. I wasn't supportive of the Synod. And, you know, I stand by that. Um, as mm. I said in one of the tweets, I said, why are we discussing things that shouldn't be up for discussion? It's yeah. settled truth that God has revealed to us as far as everything I know. And this development that t is talked about, the church needs to change. Change, yes, to grow closer to the sacred heart of Christ, yeah. but to change and reverse direction, that's contrary to the development of doctrine as I understand it. Let me probe into that question because some outlets have been reported. <clears throat> when you met with Cardinal Pierre, uh, at the nunciature in Washington, that he said something to you of the effect of the Holy Father is watching you, and I'm quoting from other periodicals, the Holy Father is watching you, you need to stop talking about the deposit of faith. There is no deposit of faith, end quote. Do you recall an exchange like that? Well, that was from a couple of years ago, and to, to be a little more precise about it, I wouldn't say that um, his eminence, uh, then he was archbishop two years ago, but mm -hmm. um, his eminence, uh, Christophe Pierre, basically discounted. Uh, that's the way that I heard it. Discounted the, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, quit emphasizing this deposit of faith so much. It's not what we need to focus on. I, I can't um, quote directly that he said, it doesn't exist, but it definitely mm -hmm. wasn't an emphasis. And that's what they were telling me two years ago. Quit emphasizing this so much and get with the program. It's what I heard. I mean, he didn't use those words, but that's what I heard. Mm -hmm. And, you know, with this, what happened um, uh, a week ago tomorrow, Thursday, last Thursday, uh, his eminence basically said, it was sort of the, the, you didn't get the warning two years ago, 
Pope Francis has made his decision. You need to be relieved of your work as Bishop of Tyler. I said I can't resign. Mm -hmm. I said I would. I respect that. The yes, the Holy Father mm -hmm. as Supreme Pontiff has the authority, if he chooses to remove me from that office, um, and he did choose to do so. I respect that. Mm -hmm. And you know, I've been yeah. gotten advice. Oh, you need to stay where you are. You need to fight this. I'm not going to do that. It would. You know, I, know. I, I said I wouldn't. I want to be a man of my word. Mm -hmm. I said, if that's the Holy Father's decision, he has, if anyone has the authority to do it, he does. There is a canonical so process Bishop, that I so know, so no evidence of, but he doesn't right. have to, he's above canon law, so. So it sounds to me like you had earlier conversations with the nuncio. There were, if you will, warnings about your social media presence, things you were saying. Um, did anyone from the Holy See cite violations of canon law that you may have incurred to, to get no, this kind no. of penalty? Was, I mean, they don't remove, you remove a bishop when they're, they're, there's some grave sin, uh, corruption, you know, sexual malfeasance, uh, you know, stealing. Is there anything that they've cited of that magnitude here? No, absolutely not. And really, Raymond, I will just say it. Um, there are many bishops still in their see that are corrupted and connected to the McCarrick scandal that we've never really gotten answers about. And, you know, to me, and it, it's not about me, I, it's about Christ and his church. But to have a situation, um, and some people have mentioned names, I'm not going to mention names, but... Um, there are bishops that are closely connected, woven into the McCarrick story, and mm -hmm. there, there's been no action against them. Um, that, that double standard is troubling, but what's more deeply troubling is, as I said five years ago, do we believe what our Catholic faith teaches or not? I said that on the floor of the bishops' meeting five years ago. Mm -hmm. Sadly, the answer that I seem to be getting, not directly, but by circumstance, by who people are associating with, by what's going on with the Synod, the answer seems to be no. We don't believe that any mm. longer. The church needs to change. Things need to develop. We don't believe what we used to believe. That, I totally disagree. And mm -hmm. that's, I guess, why I'm in the position where I am. There are a lot of lay people and a lot of bishops, I think, uh, certainly whom I've spoken to or encountered in airports on the quiet whispering, who agree with you as well. But they were not certainly speaking with the boldness that you have spoken, uh, Bishop. Let me ask this question. You are in Baltimore. <laughs> the bishops of the United States are meeting there. Why aren't you at the meeting? Why aren't you present at the meeting? You're still a bishop. Well, I was asked not to attend because of the controversy, and I, I certainly <laughs> respected that. I mean, it's, it's a meeting. I mean, I'm not going to beg to go to a meeting. Uh, there's mm. a lot, I mean, it's a lot of work and a lot of time that's spent with, you know, uh, very often it's, it's a whole lot of time and maybe a little bit produced, but, you know, so <laughs> The meeting is not something I was heartbroken to not be at the meeting. I, I respected the, the request that I not attend the meeting because, it, you know, I, I didn't hear it because, but I presume yeah. because it would have been, and it probably would have been disruptive. I mean, there's work to do, focus on the work. Um, hmm. And I was committed, I mean, you know, I'm sure I'll be criticized for being here in Baltimore, but. I had committed to be at a couple of gatherings to pray, like I was at noon mm -hmm. today, to pray a rosary. Yeah. Um, and I said, I'm not going to pull the plug on that because I'm not at the meeting. L let me ask you this. I, I want to take you back for a moment. In June, Pope Francis ordered this apostolic visitation of the diocese. Retired Bishop Gerald Kakanis of Tucson and Bishop Dennis Sullivan of Camden led that investigation. Did they meet with you personally during that visit? What did you make of those visitations, by the way? Well, they, they spent uh, from Monday to Friday meeting with people in the diocese. Uh, 
I, I really, I didn't want to know. I mean, I didn't want a list of names of who they'd met with. Um, so, I, you know, a few people actually mentioned that they met with them. But they met with me the very last on Saturday morning of that week. I'll always remember it was June 24th, the Nativity of John the Baptist. And we met for a little over an hour. And they really raised a lot of the issues, the same issues that the, the nuncio raised when we spoke uh, last Thursday. Um, and we had a very cordial, very calm conversation about my life in the diocese and hmm. they really the administrative issues didn't come up at that meeting that that word was really brought out by you know a priest in the diocese who said oh there have been administrative issues yeah you know, five years ago yeah I made some major changes because mm -hmm. I saw that the direction things were going uh, weren't according to my wishes, and, and I saw that hmm. the things were happening that I disagreed with, and I'm the bishop, so I stepped in and said, we need to make mm -hmm. some changes. That was five years ago. It's been pretty stable since. We, we surpassed our, our goal and hit a record for the bishop's appeal. That's the bishop's fundraising for the diocese mm -hmm. for 2023, over three million in pledges. Um, that was a record. We've got 20 seminarians, fine young men. Uh, we've had a couple of priests that have been welcomed in the diocese over the past couple of years. So the administrative issues, it's like there's no there there, as they say. Hmm. Um, yeah. And I mean, I've got a, a good team there, very stable. Uh, yeah, there have been some bumps in the road in 10 years, but... Nothing that, I mean, we're not going bankrupt. Bishop, they keep trying to spin this as somehow this is mismanagement of the diocese. And I keep asking publicly, I'll ask today, where are the findings? Where is the, the evidence of this? You know, a canonist told uh, the, our Sunday visitor the following. I'll put this up. Uh, he says this removal was administrative. The removal does not of itself entail any wrongdoing. It's just a pastoral judgment that the ministry has become detrimental or ineffective in that particular place. That's Father John Beale, a professor of canon law at CUA. Your response, and did the Holy See communicate that you had mismanaged the diocese to you? No, and uh, I mean... John Beale was one of my professors when I studied canon law. He's a good man. But, uh, you know, to I think to administratively remove a bishop just because, I mean, the pope doesn't like how you're administering the diocese, um, that's pretty serious. And, and I think I encouraged some of the bishops that I have spoken to to, to really look at the question. It's, it's not about me. It's done. Um, but for the future... Mm -hmm. Uh, it's it's pretty arbitrary. Uh, it's pretty much just in the the Holy Father has that authority, but to to exercise it in that way, I don't think it's the best thing for the church. Um, you know, I'm sure there are people in the diocese of Tyler that are relieved that this outspoken bishop is gone. There are some that are very sad. There are probably some that are just, mm -hmm. oh, well, you know, who's the next bishop? Um, hmm. But I'm going to stay committed to Jesus Christ, the deposit of faith that is the treasure that we have. It's good news. I'm not going to, to say, let's go the, down the synodal path and change everything because there are th some things that don't change. That's the solidity yeah. of our Catholic tradition. And yeah. nobody's going to tell me it's changed. It, it, it's but, like Bishop, reality doesn't change. Mm. Bishop, have you asked for a private audience with Pope Francis to address this decision, to address any personal concerns he might have had with your running the former diocese now? And will, or will you ask for such a meeting? I have no plans to. Um, that may be something that I discern is, is the right thing to do. But the Holy Father has made this decision. Um, clearly, we disagree on some things. Um, 
And, you know, I just, as I've said, if, if I'm going contrary to the catechism and to the Catholic faith, to the deposit mm -hmm. of faith that we've inherited, please tell me. But I've heard no message like that. I don't want to be corrected if I'm incorrect. But honestly, Raymond, I feel like it would be less than respectful to the decision that the Holy Father has made to it. it it basically is without appeal, and so to give the appearance that I was making an appeal personally, um, you know, I may reach that point, but that's not yeah. in the plans for moving forward for me. I really don't know what the plans are. People have asked me, what are you going to do? I'm going yeah. to be faithful to Christ. I'm still going to do my best to be a successor of the apostles. But what that looks like in the future, I don't know. But I, d I don't believe I can just go quietly into the dark night. I mean, mm -hmm. I've got to share the light of Christ in a world that yeah. needs his truth so desperately. Finally, Your Excellency, it has been suggested that in the past you had concerns about the governance of Pope Francis, and in May you tweeted the following that garnered much controversy. It was this, please allow me to clarify regarding Patrick Coffin has challenged the authenticity of Pope Francis. If this is accurate, I disagree. I believe Pope Francis is the Pope, but it is time for me to say that I reject his program of undermining that deposit of faith follow Jesus. That is the quote from uh, May of 2023. Might that have been where the deposit of faith conversation originated with the nuncio? Well, I think that's certainly a part of it. Um, and really, frankly, Raymond, the simple answer that I can give, two years ago, the Vatican, one of the offices, clearly said in relation to the you know, same-sex unions and all of that controversy, the Vatican said, we cannot bless sin. And now, two years later, mm. well, it, we think that's up for debate. No, it's not. Mm. And that's what I mean. That's part of the deposit of faith. That is serving the people of God. That's being a, a successor of the apostles to tell people this is sinful, repent and return to the path of Christ. To say, hmm. oh, well, we don't, we're not sure it's sinful anymore. I do disagree. And I feel obligated before the Lord, before Jesus no. Christ, to say, no, no well, that's not what he yeah, told well, this, us. <laughs> yeah, for the average Catholic, whether it's reality or perceived, it feels like it's a whiplash magisterium where what was right last week is now wrong and what was wrong last week is now totally acceptable. And people are just confused. It lends confusion. Uh, I have to ask you this. At a conference in Rome recently, you read a, a, a letter from, I, I believe you described it as a faithful uh, Catholic on Facebook. Did you know you were going to be relieved of your position when you read that Facebook post? And it contended, suggested, that the Pope may not be legitimate. Do you accept that the Pope is legitimate? Why did you read the letter? I read the letter and, you know, I mean, you, how you read things. But I presented that letter. It was presented to me. There was a lot of challenge to me personally in that letter. If you read the whole thing, it's saying, mm -hmm. Bishop, do you want to guard the truth or just keep your job? Um, that was basically mm -hmm. the challenge. And mm -hmm. so the way I read it, it, it used the word usurper, which is very strong. But what mm -hmm. I understood from that letter was that it was saying, and what I was being told is the Pope is using the authority of the chair of Peter to change what Christ has said. And to me, that, that's the nuance that I had. I didn't read it as saying, because like I said, I believe that Pope Francis is the Pope. I mean, there's been no clear statement. I mean, if he's not the Pope, who is? <laughs> um, mm. He is the Pope. Uh, but it's a, it's a tragic thing for me to say, I seriously disagree with some of the things that the Holy Father 
the man who holds the Petron office in this year, 2023, things that he's saying and the people that surround him. And I've, I've tried to say that as well, that hmm. certainly the Pope has said confusing things, but a lot of the people that he has appointed as cardinals, the people in the various offices of the Vatican, they haven't said confusing things. They've said things that contradict the deposit of faith. And the Pope has put them in place. So it really, it frustrates me. If he disagrees with what they're saying, he's the Pope. He can clear it up very quickly, very simply, and say, mm. this is what we believe as Catholics. I pray that he will do that. Your Excellency Bishop Joseph Strickland, we will leave it there. I thank you for the time. We will certainly uh, keep you in our prayers, and uh, we look forward to what you do next. Thank you for the time. <laughs> Thanks, Roman.